Hello friends, William here from Data Psychoanalytics. In today's video, we are going to be looking at how you can convert your data from PDF uh, to Excel for further reporting. Think about that bank statement that you usually receive or even a mobile banking statement or an extract from your National Bureau of Statistics and how you can get that data and analyze it further in Excel. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the PDF connector that is native to Excel, not only to just convert the data from PDF to Excel, but also set it in such a way that it's easier for further analysis. At this point in time, this will work with Office 365 or Microsoft 365. But if you have a different version of Excel, stick to the end because I'll show you an alternative solution that is still free. Alright, let's jump over to my laptop and let's get started. So we are going to be working with the 2019 Kenya population and housing census data and I'm gonna jump to page 26 which has the population broken down by age and sex as you can see here. So here in Excel we are going to go to the data tab and then go to get data from file and choose this PDF connector here. If you can't see this and you're still using Office 365, please go to the video description and see what you have to do. So at this juncture, let me click from PDF. So when you do, you're going to get this navigator so that you can go to where your PDF is. Mine is in the desktop, this folder. So you'll be connecting to this volume 3 KPH 2019 file and then I click import. Once you click import and wait for a few minutes depending on how heavy your PDF file is and how many pages it has, uh, then you'll be presented by this navigator and it will contain uh, both pages as well as uh, tables, special tables in, uh, in this uh, PDF. So as you can see, there is this table 1, table 2 all the way to the bottom and as you scroll, you'll see you have pages themselves. So the difference is uh, the pages will have all the content within those uh, pages, but within a page you could have a table and that's what is being presented by these blue labeled tables. So in our case, we want to focus on a few uh, pages here. So we're looking at page 26, which is here. And as you click, you can see the table there that I showed you earlier on. So it has the age groupings by sex. And then page 27 has age 51 upwards. And as you click, you can see the preview there. What we'll do here is to tick this option that says select multiple items. Then we'll be prompted to tick now which pages or tables that we want to connect to. In this case, let's go with page 26 and page 27. So we tick both of them and down here you will have transform data. So you click that one, then it will open Power Query where you can do the transformation. Here, as you can see now, we have the Power Query open. On the left side, we have table uh, 22 and table 23, which are in page 26 and page 27. So in terms of the transformations, we are going to transform each separately and then we are able to combine them. So the first thing I want us to do here is to remove this last column. We just select it, then right click and choose remove. Next, let's now use the first row here to be the headers for this table. So to do that, we go to transform tab and click this option that says use first row as headers. As you can see here now, the first row becomes the header for this table and that step on the right side here is being recorded. So it's being automated. The next thing we want to eliminate all the groupings like 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14 and retain only the individual uh, edges and the equivalent population. So what we do here is come to this filter button for the edge column then you can uncheck anything that you do not want to retain. So anything that has a hyphen is what we are removing. So I keep unchecking all the way to the end. And as you can see, this can take time. In the next table, I'll show you a quicker way. We uncheck all these options. And we also want to uncheck the total because that gives us the total for these groupings of edges. So we just say, okay, now. So the next thing here we want to do is to come to this 
table, double click and rename it. Let's call it page 26. Then we do the same for this other table, double click to rename it. Let's call it page 27 and repeat the same process for this table as well. So the first thing we are doing here is to promote the first row as headers and as much as you can do it from transform tab, you can also do it from this uh, table icon on the top left of this table and use first row as headers. The next thing, let's filter anything that has a hyphen in this column. So I'll come to this filter. Instead of unchecking here, we shall say text filters. And we choose this option that says does not contain. We want to retain the rows that do not contain the hyphen. And here we can type that hyphen there. Press OK. So let's scan through this column for age and see what else we are able to clean up here. So we don't have the totals but we have the not stated and we have the 100 plus. So for the purpose of the analysis that we shall do, which we shall be able to group the edges again, so that we have a separate column that groups the edges, uh, what we shall do here, we shall eliminate this not stated because it's not having any edge group. Then 100 plus, we shall replace it with just 100. So the first thing we are going to do here, we can right click this not stated and say, uh, text filters does not equal okay that's also an option to filter out this one for the 100 plus we can come here select this column anywhere in this column then uh, come replace values from transform tab replace values and on this replace values we are not going to say replace 100 plus we're just going to say plus and replace with nothing and say okay the intention here is to just retain the numerical edges then the next thing here we are going to do is to remove this total column because again it's the total of the three sex types so we have four columns in this page 27 we have also four columns in page 26 here and they are all the same so what we do now is to combine these two tables into one so i come to home tab and i want to say append queries and we shall do append queries as new because we want a resultant new table. So I click that one. So we are presented with this append table dialog box. You can choose two tables and choose here. Second table is page 27. Alternatively, you can click three or more tables and come and bring uh, one table from this side to the right side. Then say OK. Next, these three columns, male, female, and intersex, represent the same attribute of this dataset, and therefore it makes sense to make them a single column so that you have one single column for population, and then another column that segregates these ones or segments the data based on the sex. To do that, we have two options here. One is to right-click the column that you retain as an anchor. Once you right-click, you have the option down here that says unpivot other columns. As you can see here, we end up with three columns. One is the age, then the attribute column, which has the sex types, and then the value, the number of people within that age bracket and for each sex. If I cancel that step, let me show you the other approach we can go about this, is to highlight these three columns that you want to unpivot, then come to transform tab. Under unpivot columns, you choose unpivot only selected columns. So that's also another approach that you can use to do the same stuff. So here what we shall do is to either rename this column by double clicking here and renaming it. But I like minimizing the number of steps that we are doing. So I can come here to the formula bar and then instead of attribute, I can call this one sex. And then the value, I can just call it population like that. So when I enter it, those columns will be renamed without necessarily adding a new field. So down here you will see some of the population numbers are just a hyphen because there is no person who is 94 years who was recorded as intersex. What we shall do is to just replace these hyphens. Uh, alternatively, we could filter them out. So I just click here and come here and uncheck and press OK. So we shall retain only the numerical uh, values. So the next thing I shall press Control A to highlight everything. Then I come to Transform tab. I can click Detect Data Type so that I see if it is able to recognize what data type each one of these is. And as you can see, the edge is grouped properly as a number. This one is text and this one is a number, a whole number as well. 
so let's come here rename this table you can rename by double clicking there or you could come on the right side here and rename it here let's call it kenya population by sex age so that's the final table that we end up with and we are able to uh, summarize the report now so i will load these three tables but as i load when I come to home, I will not just click close and load because that will load all the three tables back to Excel. And yet I just want the, that, the combined one. So I'll first close and load two. And here you're presented with this dialog box. So I'll choose only create connection. At this stage, I will only want to create connection to that. Then I press OK. So you will get the pane on the right side here that gives you the three pages. And as you can see, they are connection only. Next, we are going to right click this combined one and say load to i choose that option then i get the same dialog box but this time around i choose table so that it can be loaded as a table i can choose where i want that to be loaded uh, by choosing existing worksheet and i want it to be in cell a1 and i press ok so it will run the process and as you can see on the right side here it is loading so as you can see we are now able to get the data as we anticipated it's 286 rows that have been loaded now let us enrich this data set so that we are able to create further analysis i have a new worksheet here that has the edge and edge cluster and now how it should be sorted uh, so what we shall do is to load this table it's a special table that's why you see this table design menu the table is called edge groups so we'll come to the data tab and then from table slash range we click that one to load it to power query so this will open power query for us and this is the table that we want so this one does not have much cleanup all we are looking for is to get this column uh, from this table and we want to have it in this other table the commonality here is the age so you can see 0 is 0 to 4 all these up to 4 years is grouped as 0 to 4 so what we shall do is to come back to this main table come to home tab and merge queries so merge queries is like VLOOKUP in Excel and that's what we are going to do here so we presented with these uh, merge queries uh, dialog box so we need to select the edge column for this uh, upper table but down here let's select the edge groups and this again we need to select the edge because those are the two columns that we're using to look up the data down here it will tell you how many uh, records were matched so this one it's good indication it's 286 of them out of 286 so you just press ok so we get this as a, a new column which we need to just simply expand so i'll click on these two arrows here on the column header uh, i just want to return the edge cluster okay and the edge cluster index uh, that will be useful for sorting i will uncheck this option that says use original column as prefix and press ok so that will give us these two columns so this is the grouping for each of edge and its all edge cluster then this one will give us the sorting let's now add a new column that will classify these edges into dependents and non-dependents so we'll come to add columns menu i choose custom column so on this dialog box here we shall be able to create a new column and we shall call it status for the formula here we need to check two conditions so i'll introduce an if function i say if the edge here is less than or equals to 18 or the edge again i double click that column is greater than or equals to 70 then space and we put in speech marks dependent else let's put uh, independent here and that's all we need to do here so when you say okay then you're able to have that column that has dependents or otherwise finally let us now convert the data types here so i'll press ctrl a come to transform tab and detect data types the next thing we want to do is to come to home close and load two i will use the second option again because if i use the first one it will load edge groups back to excel and yet it's part of the tables we have so i don't want that close and load two only create connection on this tab now that we have everything lined up let's now create a pivot table from this data set that you see here we'll go to the insert tab and from the left side here i click pivot table 
it will pick the data from the table we've just loaded. We want the data or the report to be in an existing worksheet, the current worksheet actually. And I will just place it here in column J and just press OK. So with this I can drag the sex to the rows and then I can count the number of people for each group. And as you can see now we are able to create a pivot table report from the PDF data and you can drag every other column that you'd want to use here. So if I bring sex, I mean status here, it will give us a breakdown of that. If I right click this column, I can say I want to summarize or show values as percent of grand total. And you see we get the breakdown as a percentage as well. You can even go forth and insert a chart but for now I leave it at that point. Let's now look at one of the power tips and one of the little known hacks when it comes to connecting to PDFs. So far I've shown you how you can connect to specific tables and in the process we just selected the specific tables that we want to connect to. But in some scenarios the tables that you want to connect to are more than two and they are following each other in the PDF. To illustrate, let me start by right clicking one of these uh, tables and duplicate it. Then I'll come here on the right side on the list of applied steps and I will right click the navigation one and delete until end so that I discard the steps that we already did. Let's now pay attention to this source step and when I look at the formula bar, you'll notice that we have the path to the file that we supplied and then the implementation which usually indicates uh, the version of this PDF connector. So the hack that we can do here is that in this last argument of this function, we can put a comma after these 1.3 and the double quotes, you can put a comma and define the start and the ending pages. So you'll have to type start page and then you say which page is the starting point, we say equals 26 put a comma and say end page equals 27 because we focused on these two pages. If yours starts from 26 to maybe 30 or 40, then you'll have to say the end page is 40. And that's the only thing that we need to do here. Pay attention to what you get on this table down here, which initially was giving us all the pages and the tables in this file. So if I enter, we end up with these four rows of data and as you can see based on this kind column you have page for the first two and then you have the table for these two. And like I explained previously is that within a page you could have a table and you could have other materials. So I can come to this kind column and filter this to just retain the tables and I press OK. In this case these first three columns are just descriptive. The only one that has the data is this data column. At this point, let's just right click this last column and choose to remove other columns. Let's now click these double sided arrows so that we expand whatever content in, is in those tables. Down here we want to uncheck this one and press OK. As you can see it's the same thing that we got previously and as I scroll down here we will notice after we get to age 49 here, we now start with a column header which is now the starting point of the next page. So in terms of the cleanup you may want to pay attention to that but the rest of the cleanup would be the same as we have done previously. For those of you who do not have Office 365 to follow along this tutorial, you can download the Power BI desktop for free and do the steps that we've done in this uh, exercise. Please check out this video here where I discuss how you can do that in Power BI. If you have found value from this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd want to see more of these videos, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any tutorial in the future.